Welcome all. Welcome to the Angular 2 course. And as is the case with pretty much any other course that I make, I like to give a little bit of an intro to tell you a little bit about the course in general, uh, to introduce you to some of the additional features that you have that you get along with the course, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and begin with some of the basic information. So the prerequisites, what you will need for the course. So a basic pre-requirement is a computer. Uh, the computer can, the demos are done on a Windows, but the, compu the computer can have, uh, the computer can be a Mac or it can have Linux installed. Uh, the course can be done with either three of those operating systems. However, I have demonstrated how to do the setup in Windows, but I mean, you can just send me a PM or something like that and ask me to post some additional videos. Uh, how to do it, for example, on a Mac, or how to do it on a Linux. So no big deal, I can post them if you need them. But the setup procedures are pretty much the same. You go onto the web and you just download and run. That's about it. Anyway, so you will also require some basic computer skills. Uh, by that I mean just come and know how to turn your computer on and log in, and from that point on you can just follow the tutorial more or less. Another very important uh, characteristic which you should possess and which I do believe that you do possess since you have decided to take this course uh, is curiosity. So there will be problems along the way, there will be difficulties along the way, not everything is going to be perfect, not everything is going to work out the way you want it to work out. When you code it's a perfectly natural thing that you have errors, bugs, problems, etc. So. Uh, just have the will and the curiosity to persevere, to endure. We offer tech support and we support all of our students with all of the courses and uh, we, strive to get, we strive to help them out in any way that we can. Anyway, so that brings us to our next point, the support. So uh, if you need help or assistance with something that is course related, please feel free to post in the, discussions, in the discussion section uh, there will be somebody there to reply. Maybe it won't be me, but it will be a member of my staff who will come, who will take a look at your inquiry and who will strive to help you out in any way that they can to, res to help you resolve your issue and to get you going on your way. Uh, you can send me a private message as well if you wish, but I'm, I'm kind of slow with, the response, with responses to private messages. The discussion section is really is really fast. You're gonna get an you should get an answer really fast, within a day or so. And well, that's relatively fast, but you know it's not it's not exactly a live interaction in the discussion section you post. And then there is somebody who is continuously checking it throughout the day, and if they see it, they're gonna reply immediately. If not, probably just the next day. Last resort, uh, you can send me an email. This is the last possible resort. So. Use the discussion section. If that really doesn't help in any way, send me a private message. And if uh, you can't reach me by a private message, just send me an email. I do tend to answer all the student inquiries, so wherever I can and however I can. If I, by some chance, did not reply to you and you have sent me a message, uh, please don't be angry with me. Just send me another one. I get like 139 messages, I think it was, uh, per day. So if I lose one or if I miss one, I am so sorry, but there are a lot of them. And those are just the student inquiries, not including everything else in my life. So if I did not reply to you straight away or if I didn't reply to you at all, just go ahead and copy paste that message and send it again. So it gets pushed into the, into the queue. Again, I wish to apologize to everybody in advance if I, by some chance, do not reply to one of your inquiries. Just, as I said, just send it again. I do answer. I do strive to answer them all, and that is my intent. That is my goal. But if I miss one by chance, I do apologize for that. Anyway, so that's done. Uh, suggestions. So you can send me suggestions uh, if you feel like that not all the subjects were covered in the course. That you would like some additional subjects to be covered in the course. So feel free just to send a brief description of what it is that you would like to be included into the course and I will see what I can do about it. Can I actually squeeze it in time-wise? Or perhaps I can upload it to my YouTube channel, something like that. Either way, if you wish something to, if you wish some upgrades or if you wish certain subjects to be processed, 
please feel free to send me a message. Uh, you can also message me about new courses. Uh, if you have any ideas or if you would like to see a course on a particular subject, feel free to send it to me as a request. And if you have any other questions that are not related to the courses or anything like that, feel free to contact me as well. If I can, I will strive to help you out in any way that I can. Feedback. Now, feedback is very important. So, uh, if you leave a five-star review, excellent. That's great. But if you, for some reason, uh, leave a four, three, two, one-star review, something like that, Please, I am begging you, just write down below uh, why, what, what did you not like, what was bad, and what caused you to give a lesser review, so that I know what was going on, so that I can strive to actually improve or fix certain things. So please, if you do leave a bad review, just tell me why, so that I know. I do, I do take my students' feedback very seriously and I strive to act on it as much as I can. Some additional resources. Uh, you can find the code on GitHub, or most of it, and you can find some additional videos and material on YouTube. Neither one of these two sites requires any registration to actually access the resources that are related to this course. So you can just follow the links and uh, have a look at the material that you might require for the course. All the code is explained in the course and I am going over pretty much every line of the code uh, through the course, but uh, those same chunks of code tend to place on GitHub. I don't know if you can't be bothered to type something or for whatever reason you wish to just take that code and have a look at it, how I've written it. Uh, should Most of it should be there on GitHub so you'll be able to uh, just download it. Should help you out troubleshoot and with stuff like that. But I do encourage you to type your own code, not to, even though it's available, even though I've made it available, even though anybody can download it, uh, it's, I just post everything under a GPL license up uh, on GitHub more or less. Uh, but I do encourage you to actually type it in and type it out yourselves. So type it out yourselves, you will learn a great deal. If you have paid for the course, and if you have decided, more importantly, to dedicate the time to actually go through the lectures and go through the course, uh, do yourselves a favor and type the code out. Trust me, you will learn a lot more. That time investment that you made into actually watching that course uh, will be more valuable because you will amass a greater amount of knowledge in the same amount of time as opposed to just copying the code and running it you won't learn much, if anything, from such actions. Keynote. So, uh, make sure to use the same Angular version as I, uh, if you want the things to work the same way that they work for me. And I've placed a subtitle here, Development. At the time of the making of this course, there are no stable releases of Angular 2. There are, it's still in the development stage, and new release candidates of Angular 2 are being released very fast. So expect, expect things to change really fast, but the general concept still remains the same. You can use the newer versions of Angular 2, no problems, but you have to adjust the code accordingly. So once again, Angular 2 is in a development stage. There are no stable versions of Angular 2 as of making this course. I have made this course in accordance with the material available for Angular 2 during the development stage. Uh, it is likely, if not certain, that the things will change rapidly and they are changing rapidly. I had to modify the course several times while I was actually making it. Uh, just keep that in mind. So those change, keep those changes in mind and don't expect things to work if you use a different version or something like that. Just have a look at the version that I was using and use the same version, then things should uh, tend to work out. But as I said, you are free to use the newer versions and try the same code in the newer versions and that would actually provide for a very good learning experience to actually see what changes need to be conducted in order to make it compatible with the newer versions of Angular. Anyway, uh, 
doesn't matter if Angular progresses, doesn't matter how far the Angular changes in all likelihood, uh, the primary programming concepts, the basic, pri the basic programming concepts will remain the same. You will still have more or less the same structure, you should more or less still have the same structure, the same basic idea, uh, some names might change, uh, certain, certain functionalities might be moved from one place to the other, some other functionalities might be added and so on and so forth, but the basic bottom line concept remains, will in all likelihood remain the same, so you don't have any worries in that regard. Anyway. I wish to be I bid you farewell here and I wish you a thunder of luck with this course. <laughs>